Hello, 7th graders. It's now time to go over parts of TCI Chapter 30 about China, the world's most populous country. We're going to go over sections 1, 2, and 3 only, and then you are going to use that to help you to correct your answers on your packet. So please pause the video as necessary to check your answers to make sure they are correct. If you need to add information, please do that as well. Okay, we're going to start with 30.1 and the vocabulary. There are quite a few words. The first one is a drought. That's how you pronounce that word, drought. It's an unusually long period in which little or no rain falls. Droughts can then lead to the next vocabulary word, which is a famine. It is a severe shortage of food that results in widespread hunger. And so a drought, not enough rain, means the crops don't grow. If the crops don't grow, people go hungry. And the next vocabulary word is zero population growth. It's a condition in which the population of a country does not grow, but remains stable. This condition comes about when the birth rate plus immigration equals the death rate plus emigration. Okay, so questions then. Question one, what caused great starvation in China in the 1830s, or 1870s, excuse me? A drought which caused crops to fail, just like we talked about in the vocabulary. Number two, how many people died during, due to that famine? 10 million people. Number three, out of every five people in the world, how many of them live in China? One. One, on a, one out of every five people who live in the world are living in China. Number four, how is China trying to make sure that the people have enough food to eat? By limiting their population growth, less people means less mouths to feed. So they're trying to have less people in their country. All right, then number five, using the graph here in this section, here it is, describe how China's population was growing from 1950 to 1990. Well, it grew very quickly. As you can see, when it starts down here, then it goes up very quickly to 1990. But then the estimates show that the growth, it will continue to grow, but it's really going to slow down right around where we are now, maybe even go down some. Okay, now we're moving on to 30.2, which also has a lot of vocabulary words. One of the things I really like about this chapter is that it incorporates a lot of vocabulary words that we've already used this year. So it's a great way to kind of wind down the year. So the first vocabulary word is deserts. It's a geographic region with too little rainfall to support much plant life. Also, it's a vegetation zone. A landscape was a word that we haven't really used before. It's a large area with a particular kind of scenery, such as a desert landscape. A plateau is a raised area of land, such as a hill or a mountain, with a flat top. A basin is a bowl-shaped depression or hollow in Earth's surface. A floodplain is the flat area around a river that is covered with sediment as a result of frequent flooding. So in other words, that sediment might be really, really good to grow things because it floods and brings a lot of minerals in, and it's near a river, so because it's flat, it might actually be a good place to grow crops. Okay, birth rate is a word we've had before. It's the number of births in a year for every 1,000 people in a population. The death rate, then, is the number of deaths in a year for every 1,000 people in a population. All right, and the next vocabulary word is a long definition. The rate of natural increase. So it is the annual rate of population growth. So annual means every year, so how much it is increasing per year. So this percentage is calculated by subtracting the death rate from the birth rate. It does not include people moving in or out of a country. So the other word that we were looking at before, if we go back here, zero population growth, this includes immigration, people that are coming into the country and people that are going out of the country. But this one is simply looking at birth rates and death rates. So that's the natural increase. All right, and the last vocabulary word there is the length of time it takes for a population to double. So if it starts at 50 million, how many years does it take to get to 100 million? So how long does it take to double? All right, then our questions for this section. Number six, describe why China is somewhat isolated. 
Well, there are deserts and mountains to the west, and the Pacific Ocean is on the east. So they feel like they're kind of in the center of the world because they're set apart from everybody else. And oftentimes they still refer to their country as the Middle Kingdom, as they did many years ago. Number seven, describe China's size and shape compared to the United States. Well, they're about the same size and shape, but China is actually a little bit larger size-wise. Number eight, list three landform types, types that China has. Well, they have mountains, as we talked about, plateaus, basins, hills, and deserts. Number nine, what kind of land would be found in eastern China? They have low hills, fertile river valleys, and plains. So if they have fertile river valleys, the odds are they also have rivers to transport things. Number 10, what important crop is grown in the floodplains? And the answer is rice. Number 11, in what decade did China reach 1 billion people? In the 1980s. Number 12, what must be higher than the death rate in order for the population to grow? Well, the birth rate has to be higher than the death rate. So more people are being born than are dying. So therefore, the population is growing. Number 13, what happened to China's population from 1950 when there were 550 million people by 1990? Well, now it had twice as many people by 1990. Number 14, what do they call the time it takes for a population to double like that? Well, if it's doubling, they call it doubling time. That should be an easy one to remember. Number 15, looking at the chart, how many years is the doubling time if the rise of natural increase is 2%? And if you look at the chart and follow it over, it says 35 years. All right. Now you're going to use the population distribution in China map in sections 30.2 to answer the following questions. So number 16, list the five rivers shown on the map. Well, there are more than five, but here are the ones that I saw. The Brahmaputra River, the Mekong River, the Yellow River, the Yangtze River, the Xi River, the Amur River, and the Songhua River. Pardon my pronunciation on those. Number 17, which large mountain range is on the eastern border of China near the Brahmaputra River? Well, that large mountain range, you have to look way down here and you can see that it's called the Himalayas. It's spread all the way out. What's the large desert in the northern border of China? Again, spread out, that is the Gobi Desert. And which part, the east or the west of China, is the most densely populated? That would be this portion over here, and this would be the eastern portion. So, number 20, North and South Korea are this area right here. So, this is North Korea, and this is South Korea. And what sea divides them? That would be the Yellow Sea. Uh, then it says, while... This is the map. It may be easier to analyze it on TCI. So here you can see the map, but if you can't click on it to make it bigger on here, it is available on TCI. All right, now we're gonna wrap up with 30.3. And the vocabulary words here, there's only two of them. You've got technology, which is the creation and use of tools to meet practical needs. It also refers to the tools themselves. So the important word for technology is tools. Rural, we've talked about that word before. It's found in or living in areas that are not close to cities. All right, and then our questions for section 30.3. Number 21, what form of government did Mao Zedong bring to China in 1949? A communist government. Number 20 year, 22, from what years was Mao Zedong in power? 1949 to 1976. So that's quite a while. Number 23, how did the population of China under, change under Mao Zedong? It rose quickly as the average woman was having four or five children. Number 24, how did Mao want to change the country? He wanted to make it modern, in, in, make it a modern industrial country and modernize it with machines and computers. 25. What were two goals of the Great Leap Forward? Well, number one, to increase steel production, and number two, to increase food production. 
At the beginning, we talked about them having a great famine after a drought because they didn't have enough food to eat. So one of the goals is to make sure that they could produce enough food to feed their entire population. Number 26, yes or no? Did the Great Leap Forward turn China into an industrial, industrial giant? No, it did not. And at 27, due to the famine, how many died from 1958 to 1962? So this is only four years. 20 million people died of starvation because China could not support the quickly growing population. So again, this is under Mao Zedong because he was in charge from 49 to 76. And there was a famine again that came and this time it killed 20 million people. Number 28, after Mao died, what policy was started in 1979 and why? Number 28 really is an important concept that many of you may have heard of and they are now kind of going away from, um, but it's called the one child policy, which limited each married couple to just having one child and they were then rewarded if they only had one child. Those who have more were punished. So they didn't get as much money or something else happened. So those who had more children were, were punished. So it was encouraged that they would only have one child. So how is it slightly different today? Well, today the focus is on rewards and they are given you know, more tax breaks and, and things like that if they only have one child. But families in rural areas may be allowed to have two children or more because they need them for farming. Number 30, how has the population growth changed in China? Uh, it, is a, it is growing at a much slower rate, but there is still not zero population growth. So it has slowed down, but it's still not, not growing. Number 31, how has slower population growth helped China? List two. Number one, reduce the strain of food on food and water supplies. So you have less people starving because there is more food because you don't have as many people you know, growing and doubling so quickly. Uh, and the second one is reduce the problem of having too many workers, but not enough jobs for those workers, because then you have people who have unemployment. All right, 32, how have families benefited from this policy? Well, mothers and babies are healthier, and the families now have enough money, because they only have one child to buy things for. If you didn't know this, children are expensive. Mothers may also be able to have a career because they only have one child and once that child is in school or maybe they have an adult or there's a daycare for them to take the child to, it's easier for them to do that. Whereas before, if you're having four or five children, that becomes more difficult. Number 33, with the one child policy, what may illegally happen if a couple determines they're having a girl? And why would they do that? Explain. Now, this one is this one is really tricky and it's sometimes hard for us to really think about. So many families may want a boy um, and therefore they may terminate the pregnancy. They may not want that child to live because sons are the ones who are in charge of the family name, just usually like here in the United States. If your last name is Smith you, you know, you, and you're a man, that's the name that you keep and that when you get married for women, you take the name of Smith or whatever, and then the children's name are Smith. Now, that's not necessarily always true, but that's usually the way it goes. Sons are also in charge of caring for elders. So many couples, especially if they're not very wealthy and can really only have one child, they know by the policy they would prefer to have a son. So what happens oftentimes, if couples can only have one child, girls are often abandoned which is why there's a high number of girls in China that are available for adoption. If their child is born and has uh, medical issues that they cannot afford to take care of, the child needs heart surgery, the child needs uh, eye surgery because they're going blind, that's not something that the people in China may be able to uh, pay for. So what they do is they will abandon that child or give that child up for adoption somehow and then then they will not technically have a child and then may go on to either have a healthier child, a healthier girl, or um, be able to have a boy their second time around. So number 34, what is an issue associated with more males being born than females in China? Well, if you have all kinds of males, but not a lot of females, in the future, there aren't going to be enough wives and mothers. And so it's very difficult to be able to have a child, boy or a girl, if you don't have enough women at all.
Uh, number 35, what happens if a child dies? Can the parents have another one? Explain. Well, oftentimes they are allowed to, but if the child is already like 15 years old, the, the parents may be too old or, or unable to have another child. And so that may not be a possibility for them to do. So they may be allowed to, but they may be unable to. Okay, then looking at this, the population pyramids, you can see the one on the left is from just you know, a few years ago, 2008. The one over here is from in the future, 2050. So you can see that they're going to need a lot of nursing homes. Up here in 2008, they didn't necessarily have a large population that was, you know, over 60 years old. But once you go over here, you see that a large portion of the population is in the 60 to 64 range and going up, especially for the females. Look at the females, 80 plus. You're going to need a lot of nursing homes at that time. Whereas here, you might need more child care situations. Here, you don't need as many daycares. You might need, not need as many teachers. Okay, so think of those population pyramids and how they show how China is changing. All right, there was a TED Talk here, and it is talking about the one-child policy and what some people did um, to regulate the population. It is a little tough to watch and to think about. Um, it's nothing gory, but they talk about things that, you know, maybe you haven't really thought about before. Um, so, you know, watch it if you would like. It does have the closed captions. She is from China, so her English is not perfect. She is relatively easy to understand, but like I said, there are closed captions. So hopefully you got 30.1 through 30.3 completed, and you did a nice job on filling in any, in any answers that you missed. Thanks for listening to the whole thing.